Well, it gives you some idea of what those old timers went through. If they had to roll this, this thing for any distance, they, they'd, they'd earn their pay that day, which was probably peanuts that they'd be making. You know, that's the trouble with uh, Canada and this part of the world uh, the, uh, in particular, that we don't pay enough attention to our, our history, and particularly uh, the forest industry really built the Ottawa Valley, and the children today probably don't realize what went on and how important it was. And th this is, will go a long way if people pay attention to this, they'll, they'll be able to learn what the history was. The first reaction with, with the idea to build a crib was uh, it, it was it was one that we needed to know how to put it together. So we did we did research to see how it was put together, and, and uh, once that we saw that that uh, we, we we had the wood to do it in, in the springtime, that uh, then we knew then we knew that it could come together. Years ago, we've had we've had pictures, many different pictures, very very historical pictures showing timber cribs and uh, from the, the early 1900s and then from the 1800s and <clears throat> there's there's some famous photos of, of rafts out from Ottawa but, but never I've never seen a timber crib so you know to, to actually build one and then the, my reaction when we first when we first put it together was that it was a, it was a lot bigger it was a lot bigger than I thought it would be so you know and that, when we first set it up on land and uh, you know, it was it was uh, it was neat because you know it, it was it was a raft. Like a, so many people, they, they look they look at the raft and they say, well, what all are you going to put on top of it? But you know, we have four four loading logs on top of it. But what people don't realize is that the the wood that's in the crib that is the load that went to Quebec City. And you know, you you, you do you do some research, do some reading, and and that was really interesting as far as. Uh, you know, learning learning the people that were involved in the in the early 1800s and, and uh, the hardship the hardship that they that they uh, that they went through and and just uh, you know it, it was uh, a great a great deal of work a great deal of work to to assemble and disassemble the cribs and and uh, you know it was it was very it was very dangerous as well you know with, with uh, you know and they'd spent they'd spend uh, they'd spend a couple months. You know, on these on these timber cribs, taking them to Quebec City. So that was it was quite a it was quite a feat. You know, we did we did a couple legs, you know, below the bridge at Portage. We did uh, we did a couple legs of the Ottawa River, and that that was uh, that was neat. You know, when we when we first started, we were, we were we were wondering how it would all go together, and what you know how how it would how it would pull and whatnot, and and how how it would row, and uh, things things went very, things went very well. We. Uh, we were, we were fortunate that we had, we had no snags, and you know we did we did two legs two legs of the Ottawa River, with, uh, where the Bonnechere flows into the Ottawa, and then we, we went down to Braysite and disassembled there, and then we went around to uh, to Quion, and at Quion we, we assembled it there and we left it there for the day uh, Saint Jean Baptiste Day, and for the evening, and then uh, then we took it down took it down to uh, I have a friend down at Dunrobin. So we, we took it down to Dunrobin, and we uh, we left it there for the night, and then we completed we completed that with uh, we took it down to the Nepean Sailing Club just off Carling, just uh, just up from Britannia, and, and uh, that was really neat to go into a, a sailing club with a, you know with uh, a place with 500 sailboats and, and to go in between them to to uh, to take it in for it to, to be disassembled. You know the other, the other interesting point. When you, uh, when you when you talk with people, there was a lot of people that, especially in, in the city, that there was a lot of people that they said, where would you find wood like that? There's no wood like that around. And like, there, there, was, there was one person that even said, geez, that wood doesn't look 100 years old. And you say, no, no, it's, it's this winter's wood. And that's where I had a, a photo album, a photo album which had a picture from, which uh, there was, there was uh, the Ottawa Sun, they, they wanted a, you know, showing a, a shot of uh, cutting down a tree. So we went, we went to a wood lot that uh, a, a tree that had a, the top broke off it. So, you know, and you show them, we, we'd cut this stand five years prior, and you know, there's a, it, it's cut, it's cut in a way that 
that the pine would regenerate itself. And this is up right up near Deep River. And there was a tree that, that, uh, that we cut down and, and you, you see, you know, look at the trees that are remaining in that stand that, yes, there are a lot, a lot, of, uh, a lot of pine trees left in the Ottawa Valley that, that uh, you know, that, that that's, that's what, uh, with proper management, that yes, there, there is trees. Yeah, yes, these are big trees that, that have been squared to, to put into this crib, but, but yes, they are available. With. What it takes is four or five guys that can work well together and understand how to use the old tools, the pike poles and the cant hooks. But uh, somewhat embarrassing to say, the biggest thing that you need is a good loader operator, which they didn't have in 1908. And we had an extraordinary loader operator, Clarence Lorbetsky, who took it and he was able to put it together piece by piece. We were able to set it in place, but without having a good loader operator, perhaps someone would have even been hurt. But we got away with no injury and we were able to put it together. It's a very simple, once you know it, it's a very simple design. It really is only held together by the four big pegs in the corner. The rest is just uh, gravity and pressure. Uh, the logs work against each other and work out against those logs on the outside edge that are pinned. And then you have to shim it to, uh, to tighten it up. If I was to build another one, I'd leave a little more tolerance and use more shims. It wouldn't be that hard to get the last log in. But it is the first one we ever did. So. Oh, it's been quite a rush, and it's been fun, and uh, it's been something different eh, from the day-to-day -day type work, and we, we've really, really enjoyed it. It's just been a lot of fun. Right onto the road. Tom, I'm gonna jump. Don't you dare! This river is very, very important, and uh, the, the lumber uh, industry made this corner of the world. And it's getting uh, slower now uh, for the big squared timber because there are none, but that is, there are none coming down the river. There's lots in the bush yet, though. There's real nice pine. You can see from the crib here, the pine is excellent. The, the crib basically is uh, four pins hold it together. The four corner pins is all that hold us together. The logs that are on the bottom here are floated underneath and they're placed in place and they are then uh, wedged to, with the uh, wedges, hardwood wedges to jam it tight. And then they load logs on top and I could never figure out, I've read lots of books already and tried to ask a lot of people, but I cannot figure out how they got these heavy load logs on the top. And that was really floored me, even yet it floored me because if anybody out in the outside area knows how they got these load logs on the top they were sometimes these these ones that i have here are 32 feet long and they're approximately three tons so some of the stuff that was going down the river was 60 feet long and so they'd probably be in around the five six tons and especially if they made them out of oak oak was the main log for the top end for the load logs to push down uh, the load and uh, they would be very very heavy and then you're talking tons and I don't know how they got them on. I could get them off all right by just taking a cant hook and a bunch of guys and a bunch of cant hooks and roll them off. But get them on, I, I, it just floors me. And the, the lumber industry today is still uh, quite heavy. And in the old days, there was no difference between Ontario and Quebec in those days. The, the fellas jobbed both sides of the river. The, the, most of the fellas that drove the, the rivers uh, knew both sides of the river because the company sometimes they'd be cutting logs on the Ontario side, sometimes the Quebec side. And now there's a definite difference in between uh, the Quebec and Ontario side. And uh, it's not too often that the fellows cutting Ontario is cutting in Quebec too. Yeah.
Okay, halfway up, halfway up, halfway up. Halfway up. 